Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our betting breakdown, our contrarian betting breakdown for the UFC card from Abu Dhabi, which is Saturday tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and again, for those of you here for the first time, uh, we take a very different approach to uh, to wagering, as you'll find on the internet, I imagine. And the only reason is, is this kind of reflects the way I think about wagering across all formats whether it be uh, sports betting of, of NFL or NBA or, or the stock market, you know, anything where there's a VIG involved, um, you, you, you have two choices. One is you could presume that you are better than the public, better than the, not the public, better than the, all the sum of the money that's coming into these liquid markets. Um, better to the point where you could overcome the VIG that's inherent in all these wagers or, or, you can be an expert at figuring out what part of a line is driven by narrative and bias and fade it. And, and that has been kind of my skill um, I, over the years. And the way I started this, this uh, breakdown series in part, yes, to share with you what I think are good bets or good values in the MMA streets, but more important is to kind of start to train your brain to think in, in kind of a sharper manner and try to, you know, train yourselves to think about how to be contrarian and, and how to how to wonder what a sucker bet is or how to wonder what a what a sharp bet is and things like that and how to be able to gauge psychology. And MMA, as I've described, is a perfect sport for this because what happens here is that in in a in a sport ripe with chaos, like UFC fighting where so many things can happen, people analyze these fights to the point where they come up with a completely binary result that either A wins this way or B wins this way or something, some derivative of that. And what happens is, is those results or those, uh, those paths to victory end up just being the most overbet paths. And because they're probably most likely to happen, but those paths just get pounded on by the public and those bets become the bets which are unbettable, okay? And then by definition, if those are the bets that are unbettable, all the other bets become a little bit more better. So, so what we're trying to accomplish here is figure out what the kind of like master of the obvious path is and fade that and figure out what thing in each fight we can bet and which fight is just going along with the sheet. Okay. And we've been very, very fortunate as far as results go as well. But I think more important is this the process of going through this. That's why when people say, oh, I didn't see your video, just who do you like? I really just don't want to list all that because it's more important how you get to these um, these selections without even really talking about you know the ins and outs of the fights too much, as opposed to just, well, who am I betting? Uh, so anyway, here are the rules. There are 13 fights on the card as of now. Uh, there were rumors that a couple of fights would be canceled, but it looks like they're going to be okay. And this is what we do. Number one, rule one, we're going to bet something in all 13 fights. And obviously that's not, not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, number two, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for us, one unit can and remains $180, 10 times high, you know, uh, et cetera. Um, and the reason for that is none. <laughs> it is, it is, it is literally, you know, the, probably a, pretty bad money management system in the world is bet. It's probably not, not the greatest money management system in the world. Do that as well. But we don't care. We're just putting the same amount every, every, every fight, one thing, every fight with one caveat in the last fight, we are in the main event. We are going to presume that we lose all the other wagers and bet something to get all our money. Uh, and so in this card, since we're going to probably lose all 12 fights before, we're going to be betting something in the main event that is getting 13 to 1 or 12 to 1, whatever. So in any case, let's just get going. And uh, hopefully this is somewhat instructive to you. Okay, so uh, clear your minds. Clear your minds of what you think about everything. And and welcome to, welcome to Sheets' contrarian brain. Okay, so Shara Magomedov against Bruno Silva, first fight. I mean, all you have to do is just look at this dude, this Magomedov guy. And you just don't ever want to fight him. You don't ever want to back anybody against him. He has one eye. He looks like he came out of a freaking cave. He's, 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 I think he's undefeated. Okay, maybe he's got one loss, whatever. 
And he's fighting Bruno Silva, who's basically very pedestrian over the last, you know, several fights. Um, I can't imagine anybody wanting to play Bruno Silva against this, this against this this freak of nature. So we're gonna do it. Uh, Bruno Silva plus the two forty for one eighty. Uh, oh, they're letting us bet it right away. That's even better. Okay. Um, next. We have Nathaniel Wood. No, we have Victoria Dudakova versus Jinyu Fry. Um, okay. So this is probably the one fight that has just not really been, been talked about and analyzed. So there's not that much public lean either way. Um, no one wants to touch the minus 500. Um if anything, people are saying, well, Jinyu Fry might be just kind of decent value plus 400. So I don't really even think you could bet the Jinyu Fry side. I think that might even not be the greatest value. So what we have to do is, is play Dudakova um, to do something that people are not expecting. Okay, And what people are looking for is for her either to get a, a submission or to get uh, or to go to a decision because her strength is going to be in her grappling and her wrestling. So she's either going to get the submission or to get, um, or to go to decision and win. So we're going to play Judicova by K. That's got to be the one side that is being ignored by the public. So that has got to be the one side that's the good value. So let's see. Judicova by TKO, KO, or DQ plus 275. That's good enough for me. We'll put that in right. Uh, let's not place this because I do want to get, get the whole ticket together. So that we can see them all at the end. Ooh, look at that, a little money line there. Um, a little money line movement. All right. So next fight, Nat Nathaniel Wood versus uh versus Nymoth. So again, it's pretty consensus here that Nathaniel Wood's probably better everywhere. Maybe he's a little bit chinny, but he's probably going to just, you know, just do his thing, either a well-measured striking battle where he wins or Maybe he can go for takedowns, but Namov is coming off of a of a win against uh, against the Malarkey. So I think that that Namov is might be getting a little bit of, of love here. So I don't think you could play the Namov side. So I think the side that is most contrarian is probably Nathaniel Wood inside the distance. So that's probably where we're going, we're going to play. Um, um, I don't really have a lean, whether it's by submission or by TKO. I think people are playing or at least considering both sides. So we're just going to play Nathaniel Wood inside the distance either way. So plus 200. So Nathaniel Wood inside the distance plus 200 for 180. Mike Breeden versus Anshul Jubilee. Um, this is the... the <laughs> Uh, this is the the the, the big uh, underdog play of the week that everybody is just completely convinced is is happening. Breeden has been steamed from like plus three fifty down to plus two twenty. Essentially, how is Jubilee this Indian guy minus three hundred over anybody? And it's just the most popular underdog there is. So we will just take Anshul Jubilee inside the distance, and let's see what that what we're gonna get for that. Probably not that much, but let's just see. Jubilee inside the distance. Um, again, I don't know whether it's going to be KO or submission, so we're going to try this one. Oh, how you how you do this? This is a terrible lot. Jubilee, who's like basically a fraud against the against Breen, who's obviously the side. You're only getting one twenty inside the distance. That's going to be terrible. So we're going to do it. All right, moving on, we have. Abu Azatar versus Cedric Dumas. Um, again, this is you should you should hear what Twitter sphere is saying about Dumas. He's just terrible. He got owned by Josh Fremd, who's terrible. The only reason he he beat Brundage is Brundage had the lowest fight IQ ever. And not only that, that that Azatar is going to get that home cooking. Um, and why would they send Dumas? We're sending Dumas you know, 5,000 miles to fight the hometown guy. Um, uh, so we're just going to just go against this whole idea. We're, we'll just take Dumas again inside the distance. Not a problem. The only thing I will say is that Dumas, the one thing they're saying about him is that he might be able to grapple. 
So I think the side of Dumas that might be overbet is the Dumas either by decision or by submission. So we are going to go with Dumas by KO. Dumas by KO plus 175 for 180. Now, again, if you want like a more realistic approach to the to, to these fights and not be contrarian, that's why that's why I do DFS. See, daily fantasy sports presumes that these lines are right. Um, and it, you know, you get derivative uh, projections from that and things like that. But when you're wagering, I mean, you have to presume that the lines are wrong somehow, otherwise you shouldn't be betting, right? So, so that's why the, the approach to that is much different than the approach to, to betting, obviously. Um, okay, so uh, Javid Basharat versus Victor Henry. I mean, we would have thought that this would be kind of clear, but it turns out Victor Henry is getting a little bit of, of, of steam here. You know, Basharat, he hasn't really just shown out by having any real dominant victories. And Victor Henry has on his his resume a couple of real high volume, high volume approaches. And one, one fight was a win, one fight was a loss. Um, but what I'm not seeing people capture is the idea that if Victor Henry is going to win, and he is going to win because of his volume. You know what a lot of volume sometimes provides? A little bit of a finish. So we are going to take a big old shot here. And we are going to take Victor Henry by KO, which is probably a billion to one. Let's take a look. Victor Henry by KO, DQ, whatever, is plus 20 to one. I mean, that's probably asking for, like, if he wins by submission, are we going to be really pissed? Let's see. I mean, Javi Basha goes for these takedowns, and I just don't know if Victor Henry can get it. I think if Victor Henry wins, it's I don't think it's going to be on the ground. So we're going to go for Victor Henry by KO for 180. Good luck with that. Okay, um, moving on. Muhammad Yaya versus Trevor Peak. I mean, this is going to be a train wreck. Trevor Peak just just brings just brings the heat, and essentially, there's just no way this fight's lasting more than a round, one way or the other. The only thing I would say is that is that Peak in his last fight did go to a decision. Okay, he lost, but he didn't get the KO, and he did was pretty durable. Um, so I think what people are on here is, is either Trevor Pete round one or maybe Yaya by decision or late. So I don't think we could play those, what we can play. And this is, could be kind of gross. We could play either peak by decision, ouch, or Yaya round one. So take a look. I, I, I'm trying to think of what do you think or even look is the bigger line. Trevor Peak by decision or Yaya round one? Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. Uh, round props. We have y Yaya round one is plus 450. Trevor Peak by decision plus 800. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Just literally no chance to win. But that's, where, that, that's, what, that's what we're here for. The no chance to win. It has a chance to win. You want it has a chance to win, and it, it, the chance of the winning, I think, are implied by these odds to be less. You know, are are less than plus eight hundred. I think you're getting value here. So many people have to be on these peak early props and these yah yah late props that the peak late prop just has to be poor. So uh, one eighty by decision plus eight hundred. Okay, moving on, we have Tim Elliott versus Mohamed Mikhaev. Um the Beginning of the week, I thought that we were getting a little bit of steam on Tim Elliott, but no, it's it's kind of one-way traffic to, to with Mikhaev. The only thing you can really bet here, there are two things you could do. If you were saucy, you could just play Tim Elliott. And uh, you can play Tim Elliott uh, and, and just take the money line. The other thing you could do 
there are two things. There are a couple of things. And this is, again, this is really, really dangerous, but you could play Tim Elliott by submission. And because this fight does rate to end up on the ground, and Tim Elliott's a pretty good grappler himself. And if he just gets Makayev in a weird spot, listen, Makayev almost got submitted in his last fight before he turned around. Um, he gets him Elliott by submission. I mean, that's probably a billion to one. Or the other thing you could play is, which is a little more reasonable, is Makayev by knockout because Makayev is expected to get the submission. So it depends on, on, on really your level of, of, of risk tolerance. Tim Elliott by, so you could play either Tim Elliott, I think by money line. You could certainly play Tim Elliott by submission. That is, that is really nasty. Or Makayev by KO. Let's take a, so let's take a look at some of these odds. I'm sure Makayev by KO is not going to be that big of a deal. Um, wow. Plus 700. Let's do that before, before something else happens that I regret. Makaya by KO. Now again, you know, he's probably going to take him down. And who's who said he's Nash? Who's who said he doesn't just go for the ground and pound here? So this is good to me. Makaya by KO plus seven hundred. All right, uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Maureen Gafarov. So this is the deal. Again, people have just kind of just gathered into this one thing, and that that Gafarov is probably going to be going for takedowns and Saeed has a really, really good DAT. So these, you have this style situation, this, this style set up where Nurmagomedov by excuse me, by submission has to be completely overvalued. People have to be playing that uh, to, to a higher degree than is, than is, is, is uh, that, that reality dictates just because of that narrative. Um, so we're not going to, we're not going to be able to play that. Gafarov, you know, if he gets those takedowns and Nurmaga Madoff does not get the submission, it's going to probably make for an easy road for Gafarov. So that's what we're going to play. We're going to play Gafarov. Um, we can either play a money line or in sport or, or by decision. Let's take a look. You play plus one ninety. Or you could play him by decision plus 450. We're going to do that. You know, I'll tell you that, um, what's his name? Nurmaga Madoff, he got, I don't see he got robbed, but he lost a coin flip decision in his last fight. And these types of, these fighters, they, 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 like coin flip decision losers are just kind of tough to, to, uh, to bet on. So we'll take Gafroff by decision here, plus 450 for 180. Boy, we are really going to be losing a lot going into this main event. I really hope we hit it. Uh, okay, Ali Skaroff versus Alves. Uh, you know, this is pretty well set on that Ali Skaroff is uh, is going to, you know, if anything, Alves kind of gets to him round one, but Ali Skaroff is going to take over round two and, and either get the submission or the knockout in round two or maybe round three. Um, so these are the things you can't bet. What you can bet is Alves' money line or maybe Alaskarov by decision. So let's take a look and see what what do you think is better, by the way? Alaskarov by decision, what's wider? Or Alves money line? I think it's probably close. Let's see. Uh, well, money line for Alves is plus 425. And Alaskarov by decision is plus 500. We'll take Alaskarov by decision. Because as a very wise man once said, it pays more. Um, okay, we have just a couple of more. Magomed Ankalaev versus Johnny Walker. So here is the overwhelming consensus here is that Johnny Walker really doesn't have too much for Ankalaev, but Ankalaev is not much of a finisher. Okay, so it's probably going to be something like an, either Ankalaev decision, something really boring like that. Um, if Johnny Walker is going to win, he's probably going to have to ramp up the heat. So I think we're going to probably just have to take Ankalaev in round one, um, just to kind of fade that narrative. So let's take a look and see what it is. Ankalaev round one. Um, well, 
that's by KO. You're really not going to get too much here, but I think that's what you're supposed to do. And Goliath, round one, plus 215 for 180. I, th I think we're legitimately going to go 0 and 12 this fight, this 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 week before the main event. I mean, I usually kind of joke about it and say, "Oh, I think we're going to go 0 and 12, and we end up, you know, probably making money." <laughs> but 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 this is this is legit, like 0 and 12 city. But we're going to be on the right side of the value here, and I guess that's something. Kamaro Usman versus Hazmat Shemaya. Um, two ways to play this, I think. So Usman is taking this on short notice. Kamayev's a beast. And Usman also, uh, there's this thing, video going around where he said that he hurt his knees or his knee popped or something like that. Playing Usman is really uncomfortable here. Um, but the problem is that Usman is such a name value that I think that he's going to be, that I think he's going to be a little bit I don't want to say overowned, but it's not going to be that contrarian to play Usman. The only thing I think you can really bet here and be on the on the contrarian side of this is maybe Shemaya by decision. Um, I don't think people are expecting that. Um, I think that Shemaya, I think that they're expecting Shemaya to get him out of there early, or at the very least to get him out of there late. I think Shemaya by decision is probably. The way to go here and let's take a look shamaya by decision plus 275 all right that's that's fair but we'll take that one so let us recount the, the atrocious bets that we made here um the first one in the uh the first fight we bet on bruno silva against this complete beast i, I can't imagine anybody wanting to play bruno in that fight so we did it then we play Dudakova to win by TKO. Literally the only thing that she can't do is get a KO, I think. So we're playing that one, plus 275. Nathaniel Wood, uh, you know, he's going to be a very, obviously, measured approach. Uh, probably just grind out a decision. Um, uh, Naimov is probably the one with the finishing upside. Nathaniel Wood is, is, is quote-unquote chinny. So uh, we'll take him by TKO or submission, plus 200. Jubilee, just... No business being minus 300 over anybody. Breeden is not only that, but Breeden missed weight and he's and, and they're going to let him fight anyway. So Breeden also has a big weight advantage now over Jubilee. How am I going to play him to finish at only plus one twenty? So that's a loser. Uh, Dumas is just terrible. The only reason that he won was because of Brundage's low fight IQ. His other fight was was he got owned by Josh Fremd against now he's against Azatar with all the home cooking. Um, you know, we're just going to take Dumas anyway. The only thing I would say, boy, oh boy, I don't want to change anything, but if you honestly really want to get contrarian, you'll play him by decision because people will presume that um, there's going to be a natural home bias for Azatar. But I think we're being contrarian and not playing him by TKO. Should we? You know what? I am going to change this one. We're going to go back to the Dumas fight. We're going to play him by decision because that's even less likely. To happen. Where is this? Um, where is Dumas? Saeed, Johnny Walker, Peak, Dumas. Let's get back there. So we are going to play actually Dumas by decision. Oh, we get more plus 300. Excellent. Oh, very nice. All right. Uh, then we have Victor Henry. While he's getting a little bit of love uh, against Basharat, I don't think anybody's betting on him for a KO. Uh, I don't know if this is possible, but if he's going to win because of his volume, then volume, you know, the more times you hit somebody, more likely he is to get knocked out. So let's go. Trevor Peak, obviously he never going to win a decision here because he's just going to just empty the gas tank in round one and two. Um, so this is a loser, but plus 800 by decision. Muhammad Makayev by TKO. I think this is actually almost not even contrarian. I think this is actually a reasonable thing that could happen. You know, he gets on top and then he 
not, if it gets goes for the ground and pound instead of the sub plus seven hundred, we'll take that. Uh, Gafarov, I know he's going to probably go for the takedowns and and get submitted, but we'll try this plus four fifty. Ali Skarov, uh, you know, he'll he'll survive round one and then get him out of there round two. At most, it'll take him till round three. There's no way he's going to get to you know he's going to have to go to a decision here, but we'll try it plus five hundred. And Kalayev, round one, uh, you know, this guy has literally no finishing ability, not finishing ability, he just doesn't have that killer instinct here. So if anybody's going to get the the, the the finish, it'll probably be Walker. So we'll play Mount Kalayev, round one, plus 215. Chamayev by decision, plus 275. Again, you know, if I think if, 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 if I think either Usman is, is fit or he's not. And if he's fit, I think he's live for a decision. Uh, if he's not, he's going to get KO'd early. So Kamaya by decision is probably no chance. So plus 275 there. We did the Dumas by decision already. And so we're going to be OM12. So what are we going to do in the main event? So in the main event, we have Volkanovsky against Makachev. And, you know, this is a, uh, they, they've had this fight before. And it was very, you know, it was very close. Volkanovsky is, is, you know, he's very, very technical. He's an incredible fighter. And he fought off most, some of the takedowns by Makachev. Um, and he actually threw up a couple of strikes off his back. They were, you know, didn't have a lot, show a lot of damage to them, but he racked up some points there. Um, this time he's taking it on short notice. Problem here with this fight is that people are on both sides here. I mean, there's really not a lot of contrarian thing you can do. The only thing I can think of, really, and that's what we're going to do, is this narrative. Like Volkanovsky, if, if nothing else, he's like really tough. And and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna bring it and he's going to drag, at least going to drag Makachev into deep waters. So I think what we can do is play Makachev like really early. Uh, in like in a, literally in a particular round, I'm not good enough to get the. Well, I was about to say I'm not good enough to get the actual method of victory, but let's just see what these other odds are here. Um, and we we could be, you know, really, yeah. This this is just not going to be good enough, and we got to have eleven to one. So we have to we have to pick the method of victory. Um, so we have to kind of go backwards into this, but if that's, we definitely have to do that. We have to play Makachev really, really early. So maybe round one by TKO is plus 1100. By sub round one plus 850. So we'll, we'll go for round two. Okay. We'll go uh, Makachev by submission round two plus it's only 1100. Uh, this is this is this is atrocious. This is literally atrocious. But we have to get our money back, right? And we have to play Makachev sort of early. Is this sort of early enough? By sub round three? No, we're just gonna have to do it. So Makachev round three for one eighty. So this is a uh, obviously a train wreck, but hopefully. This at least taught you how to do this type of analysis. I can't promise you we're going to win any of these, but I certainly believe that we are on the sides of these fights that are the least owned of them all. And that's and, and when you you when you're presuming that the lines are at least somewhat efficient, right? You know, you have to try to get your edge somewhere. And if we believe that narrative and bias is leading people to other results, then these then these results have to be the better values. So we will see what happens. We're going to put these bets in right now. See if we can do this. Now, it's not going to let me until I log off because it doesn't like Zoom. But we, we, will, we will be putting this in as soon as we log off. So again, if you want more uh, you know, uh, reasonable expert DFS advice, uh, you can check out my YouTube channel and TrueDFS for that uh, and TrueDFS's website for that. But uh, should be a good card. Good luck, everybody.